Hello everybody, this is a video on taming, domination, a tiny little bit of ritualism, but mostly just on like using pets and if I recommend these builds for people or not at the moment. Kind of just my feedback experience as having 1600 hours as a tamer and dominator. Now I kind of want to just make this disclaimer up front. First off, I'm not a very good uh, PvP player. I'm decently okay at PvE, but... I'm not one of the best players there is, so, you know, if somebody kicks ass, they'll have probably a different perspective than I will. Um, and then on top of that, you know, there's still a lot of variables when it comes to, you know, using pets and stuff. And some I'll talk about and some I might miss or go over. On top of that as well, I'm not making this video to defend the game, promote the game, uh, nor to really just even promote or, like, uh, demote... <laughs> a domination taming. I'm just making this video just to kind of explain my perspective and just give some general information that somebody might need um, just to understand what tamers and domineers go through and if uh, this sounds like a good deal for them to even look into or get into. So, um, so let's get it going. Now, first off, um, I kind of want to start with a controversial topic at the moment which is just is using pets op so at the moment you have all sorts of different pets and they're used for all sorts of different uh scenarios and things like that so for instance if you have a terror bird it's really good at chasing people down and finishing them off because the terror bird puts a bleed on them they're three speed however though if you're caught with a terror bird in the middle of a field and you're surrounded by two mounted archers more than likely that terror bird is going to get its ass kicked and it's going to die and however much time you spent getting that terror bird or whatnot it's going to go right down the drain uh, how much time you spent leveling it it's going to go right down the drain they're going to kill it um, if you're not able to kill their horses first or one of their horses first and send the bird on it and then boom you know now you're basically a tamer without a tame and even though you might have got one of them dismounted they're both still alive so you can still do what you can maybe as a solo mounted archer or mounted mage but it's still going to be a hell of a fight and more than likely you're going to lose that fight however if it's a one-on-one -on -one, that's a different story you got the bird putting pressure on them they either have to focus on your horse or focus on the bird if they focus on the bird then more than likely they won't have enough dps to kill it maybe they do maybe you got a low level bird um, but if they don't then you're definitely going to be able to probably kill their horse, uh, run away, heal up the bird, bring it back, and then finish off the person on the ground using mounted majory, mounted archery, and plus your bird. So it can be definitely pretty strong. There's a lot of tactics you can use as well with the pets in general. Um, but before I get into that, I'll just talk about the different types of pets using them in different scenarios. So that's an example with the terror bird. Now, let's say we go into the sewers or something, you know, a very enclosed space and I bring a terror bird with me. It can still chase people down and chase them really fast and end up, you know, putting some hits on them and killing them. Um, however, you know, it's still just a big target. And if you find yourself running into a group of maybe like three or four people, uh, maybe even two, then you're still gonna find some trouble because a lot of people complain about how pets are OP, but yet these people do not take the time to ever uh, hit up their tamer buddy or to hit up their dominator buddy and just say, hey, can you let me practice defending myself against these pets? Like, how do these pets attack? Like, how fast are these pets? Like, do they have any special abilities? They just show no real interest towards even learning how to defend themselves against these pets. And most of the time, there are secrets that tamers try not to talk about, but I'm going to talk about a few of them today that can make pets flop pretty much like pets are strong but they're not everything and if you just are able to keep your composure and come up with a strategy in the middle of battle more than likely you will win of course it's easier said than done because sometimes you know somebody has an elder terror bird and they're maybe in a group of three and they run across your group of five that's still a big problem you know you you because you got three other guys to worry about plus the tamer himself which might be using a sword or using a bow or using magic to offensively try and kill you so yes i understand there are some situations where it is extremely strong and uh there's not much you can do to it at all besides just to put pressure on it but then there's other situations though 
where you can actually come up with um, a makeshift strategy if you run into these type of pets, how you will handle it and stuff like that. Because I will just say that there are some guilds and some individuals in this game that will give pets a lot of crap in the system, a lot of crap. Um, but typically, they're not the players that live up north in the northeast. The ones that live up in the northeast, for the most part, they laugh at pets. They don't have any tamers or dominators in their guild besides the ones that just tame horses or the ones that they um, are getting ready in the future to tame and dominate. Or sorry, to dominate trolls with. Um, they just are kind of like, no, like, why would you be a tamer? They suck <laughs> because they know how to deal with it. Um, not a lot of players can deal with it because let's be real a ways to deal with pets pretty easily is to just have really strong uh, long bows uh, really um, what is it in really good armor like steel you know something like that which will reduce your damage greatly taken by those things and you'll be able to hit these naked pets wearing no armor but just their flesh for like 80s and 90s and maybe even 100s depending on what you're using you know and these pets only have like you know the max level terror bird has like 600 and something you know so hey i'm just saying six people plus a longbow you know i mean that's gonna flop not much places to hide it either since a lot of the time the really strong pets are in their elder form which makes them big targets as well so what i'm trying to say is is like if you really want to understand pets more there is opportunities to do it and i encourage you taking those opportunities like myself as a tamer if you ever see me in town you know especially in fabrinum you can ask for some training and i'll charge you for sure but i'll teach you how to defend yourself on ground against the pets you know teach you how to parry them teach you how to block them you'll be able to just practice it like you know learning how to counter it pretty much um how to counter it when you're moving backwards that's a huge one that i recommend people get into because it's one thing to parry pets on the ground it's a whole other thing to parry them while on the move and it's very important to learn because if let's say you're with a group and they send their terror bird on you um you need to back up but you also need to parry the pet as well and return fire and you're you, if you haven't had any practice that'll be pretty hard to pull off but if you're able to practice it it'll be a lot easier and it'll increase your chances of surviving as well as defeating the enemy pet um and you know that's something that i offer as well so you have stationary training moving training and then you need mounted training because every pet is a little bit differently when you're mounted there actually is some ways to where if you have a terror bird chasing you you can actually slow now this is a secret you can slow down your horse and then the bird will take a swing at you but then you can speed it up again really quickly and then it'll miss so it's like you can have it take a swing on you and have it not do anything. Sure, it's a little bit more micromanagement stuff, but at the end of the day, there are some strategies that you can figure out on how to counter these pets by just practicing with them and learning what to do. And um, also too, yeah, just learning how uh, your abilities will do and fare against pets. You'll get kind of a good idea because typically if you hit a pet, you'll be able to tell what level it is. Now, some people figure this out, of course, you know, same with horses and stuff, but it goes the same for pets. So, for instance, if I hit a terror bird for 80 damage with my longbow and it takes 10% of its health away, maybe 15%, uh, we know that that is a pretty high level terror bird. Now, if I hit 80 damage on another terror bird, we know that it's like, and it takes maybe like 25% uh, of its bar away. Now we know it's a very low level terror bird uh, and you could put a lot more pressure on it. So, there's a lot of little things that go into countering pets that you can really get accustomed to and used to if you take the time to practice and things like that so um, that's just the example of the terror bird but now let's talk about you know a tagmaton or like a turtle because the new sexy thing that you'll see in town right now due to the patch um, a little bit ago is that you'll see tagmatons in dungeons <clears throat> now the tags um, they're really slow and they can still catch you on foot definitely you'll eventually out they'll outstam you if you um are not heavily invested in some decks but on top of that you know these tagmatons they cannot be parried they can only be blocked so no matter what you do when you get into combat with them you always take damage from them now this is one thing that is also the same i believe for uh hunter lizards as well and uh the bear's middle attack that it uses on you because there's a couple pets that currently you cannot parry them you can only block them 
And uh, this is a big difference because, you know, with the parries, you can basically feed yourself like really strong hits and put a ton of pressure on the pets. But with these type of uh, pets, you know, it's very difficult to deal with them because you can't just parry them. You're, you're always going to take damage from them, meaning that there's always going to be that consistent pressure on you and stuff. So it's very hard to counter. The best way to do it is kind of just to block and hope that you have buddies with you that can return fire using magic or like strong piercing damage but i personally would recommend magic against those things if you mage bang a tagmaton it'll put a lot of pressure on them uh more like thunder lash rather than fulmination you need quick damage to make the tamer decide whether they're going to keep the pursuit on you or pull their pet back and try and heal it up in the process so that's one example right there that, you know, the tax can be pretty good. But however, let's say that you're out in the middle of the open in a field and you see somebody with a Tagmaton and they're on a horse. Now, sure, they could have maybe a 125 horse with a Tagmaton. But most of the time, if they do, you're going to know that the Tagmaton's pretty weak and you could kind of just blast it down. Now... If they do have a 125 horse, though, there's a good chance that they'll still put up a fair fight and be able to possibly kill your horse, meaning that then the Tagmaton's going to be on the ground and it's going to chase you to try and kill you. So there's a little bit of things you can do to try and counter that, but at the end of the day, you know, it's all about just knowing that Tamers and Dominators are still limited based on, like, their horse and based on what they can do in the location that their pet is at. Because obviously there's a huge advantage to, to a tamer having a tagmaton inside of an enclosed dungeon than there is with somebody having a tagmaton out in the middle of an open field. Now, don't get me wrong, though. I did hear a story just the other day from one of my tamer buddies, uh, dominator buddies, that said that he got into a 1v3 with some people and he had a tagmaton and he ended up kicking their ass. It wasn't a max level tagmaton, but at the same time, too, it wasn't, uh, I don't think it was new, uh, experienced players that attacked him either. It might have been more towards on the new end type of players. So there are definitely advantages to where still the pet can shine, but then there's other situations where it's just a sitting target pretty much. Kind of how earlier I talked about with the terror bird just being in a field and mounted archers just easily being able to kill it and stuff like that. So on top of that as well, um, with taming and stuff, if you have, uh, let's see, there's also some things that come up about like pathing issues. So we'll use a different pet, for instance, we'll use a bear. Now bears, they could be parried. Uh, you cannot parry their middle attack. Um, they attack left, right, up, and down, and you ah. cannot parry that down attack. You can only block it. So basically, that is a spot where you're weak. However... If you don't panic and stand your ground, and if it's just you versus a tamer, you can easily parry it, if you've had training, of course, and then not take any damage and return fire to the bear. And now if the tamer is putting pressure on you with magic, you can still try and kite that bear back to where you can still make it more difficult for the tamer to hit you with magic or their bow. And if they get in there with their sword, then you're kind of in trouble. You can try and use the parries from the tamer um, to attack you know, the bear or to put pressure on the tamer. But at that point, you know, it's always difficult for somebody to win in a 1v2 We have a tamer that uh, has their pet on the ground and you're on the ground as well. You know, it just comes in the question of like if uh, they're mounted or if you're mounted, then you kind of have a slight advantage, I would say. So that's an example with the bear. But, you know, now let's say that we take that bear and we're traveling across the world. So right now with pathing and stuff there are times where your bear or your pet might get stuck on a rock or on a tree or it might just get uh glitched out or something like that and just disappear uh this is something that happens pretty frequently i believe with tamers and dominators where you just you're with your pet one second and you look behind you and it's gone and there's a major problem with this is basically first off with tamers and dominators you know you're not always guaranteed to have your pet even though you have your pet, <laughs> which is a huge red flag, you know, because what I mean by that is imagine you lose your pet, it disappears out on a node line, and um, you're trying to look for it and get it back, then all of a sudden you run into like a group of two, and they kill your horse, and then you're in fight with them, and your pet is still nowhere to be seen, nowhere nearby you. It was by you a few minutes ago, and now it's not. This has happened to me a couple of times, and it's extremely infuriating, because you know if you had your pet with you, you could have put up a good fight, and uh, but without it though, I mean, you're, you're investing like 400 points basically into it, to, just for it to not be there. 
and it's just really demoralizing. It really sucks, and this is something that a lot of tamers have to go through, um, just for your pet disappearing at mode lines as well as it just getting stuck in certain situations and things like that. Um, when it comes to the pathing, sometimes you'll notice like breakdancing pets. It looks like that they're just wiggling back and forth, back and forth in the same position. Sometimes you'll see this mainly when uh, a pet is trying to go down a hill or going, uh, yeah, mostly going down a hill or crossing something or, you know, it'll just get stuck and it'll just kind of wiggle back and forth in place. It's still trying to get to you, but it's just stuck. Uh, this is huge too because there's been times where even if your pet is with you and you get into a fight Let's say because this happened to me a couple weeks ago Let's say that you're chasing somebody and they jump over a rock formation now the rock formation is pretty close to the ground But let's say they jump over it and your pet is chasing them your pet will run right up to the rock And then sometimes it'll get stuck inside of the rock in the middle of pursuing them And then you go back and you try to call your pet out of the rock in the middle of battle and it won't it won't get unstuck. So then you have to open up a GM ticket in the middle of battle and say, please hurry, my pet is stuck. And you have to pray that your pet gets stuck out of the rock. And then sometimes, you know, the smart players will see that the pet's stuck and they'll kill you. And they don't care because they hate tamers anyway. You know, they think we're one trick ponies or whatever. So um, they won't show any mercy for that. And you just basically lost your pet and you lost your time. And it's just really infuriating, you know? Especially when you're traveling places too, because when we talk about having a tag and when we ha talk about traveling, having a turtle, you um, you typically get these things in particular areas. With turtles, they're a lot more accessible than tagmatons by far, or even like water lizards, which are the new thing that are added that are found in the south jungle. Uh, but you still need want to bring it to the location that you're going to use it at. And a lot of the time, you know, these pets, they do not keep up with mounts. Only three of them, four of them do, which are panthers, cougars, razorbacks, and terror birds. Uh, those are the four that keep up with mounts. But the other ones, though, you kind of have to go slow when you're on a mount. And now the problem with this is just that it just takes such a long time for you to transport your pet from one end to the map to the other that it, it just it's just kind of lame you know at times like you want to use a bear but they're just hella slow so sure i'll use a cougar this crappy cougar that its hitbox is its face that's always up in you and you could just do hella damage to it and kill it in like four hits with a steel sword if you're a foot fighter um you know and even at max level <laughs> so there's always that type of situation where yeah, sure, you, you can use these pets and stuff, but you still have to transport them. And like a Tagmaton, you know, it could take forever to transport one of those things up north just from like uh, its spawn area, which is south of Meduli, um, all the way up to Fabronum. It could take me like an hour to an hour and 15, 30 minutes just to bring it in a straight line, hoping that it won't get stuck, which it has before. Let me remind you, it got stuck, like just being near a lake, not even at the lake, but just near a lake. It got stuck and wouldn't even move. Um, I tried relogging. I tried lots of different things, but it just it just was stuck, you know. And it was really it really sucked. I spent like an extra thirty minutes there trying to get it unstuck, waiting for a GM and stuff. Really frustrating. Um, so yeah, you just have to wait for your pet to travel. But then on top of that, let's say that you're with a group and you're they're all ready to go you're the only freaking tamer or dominator in the group and you decide to bring a bear and they're like yeah bring a bear and then all of a sudden now all your everybody in your group is traveling super slow because of you because you know you keep saying oh sorry i hit a node line i gotta wait for my pet oh my pet got stuck on a rock give me a second gotta open up a gm ticket you know oh give me a second my pet's way back there we gotta slow down let's take it at two speed okay now one speed because two speed's still too fast for it you know what i'm saying it just take up a lot of time and you know it just uh doesn't really you know make traveling with a group so fun so what i'm trying to say is, is that at the end of the day you know pets are op sure but make sure that you've had the training and just kind of understand what tamers and dominators have to go through to get some of these pets sometimes because sure in some situations they're throwaway pets but most of the time if somebody's wearing steel and they're a foe fighter they're not going to have much trouble fighting a pet like let's just be real they're just going to kill it you know, I mean, they could still parry it and stuff, but in certain situations, if they're outnumbered and uh, or if they're alone, then yeah, they're definitely still going to have a hard time fighting a pet. But I think that's well deserved because, you know, we invest so much points and so much time into getting these pets and transporting them to places to use them. And at the end of the day, we just know that like a group of like two or three people can kill it if we just mess up 
at the wrong time or if we get ambushed at the wrong time and things like that because with certain pets there are certain play styles that you can play to get an advantage over these pets as well um like a turtle for instance you know sure it might be have its hard armor shell but it's hella slow so you could cut that away and then kind of have your other buddy shoot it with arrows or use magic on it and put pressure on it and let me tell you once the pressure is on like a turtle or some type of pet that's really slow the tamer's kind of screwed because if they try and kill their pet they're more than likely you're not using it to attack anymore and they're just pulling it back and it's just a sitting target or well, a moving target but a very slow moving easy target that you can just continue to put more damage and more pressure on and it's either the tamer has to keep healing the turtle or he's just gonna tell it to attack again and then it's gonna die or you know or he's gonna run out of mana it's just one of the two typically and you know what i'm trying to say is is that like with tamers and stuff if you're in a group of like two to three um sometimes even four like you're very well capable of defeating pets and stuff and if you haven't had training or even took in the time to bother like how to parry them or how to counter them uh then just try not to complain as much <laughs> that's all i'm saying because i mean yeah it's push one button but at the end of the day you, you still got to call back that pet at a particular time or you have to tell it to stay because in some certain situations you know you tell the pet to stay and then you use the pet to ambush somebody um, that's a strategy, you know, that takes skill, right? You don't just click one button, you try and figure out a position where to ambush somebody using the pet is, you know, or you try and figure out um, some way to utilize the pet's uh, natural color of its skin or whatever, of its fur, to try and ambush somebody. You know, a brown bear, hide it near a mountain, hide it near the rocks, you know, black bear, use it at nighttime, you know, a panther, same, you know? It's all these little thoughts and considerations that can go into making your tamer domination build that much stronger, but still make sure you do your part as just knowing, like, if you really do have a problem with tamers and you always get your ass kicked by them, then try and find a friend or somebody who can teach you how to fight against these pets and get practice at it. Um, but yeah, they can still be pretty strong. Another thing that I want to talk about as well is just, like, water. Uh, because we talked about pathing path thing with it getting stuck, but now with water... Um, this is very, very frustrating. So, like, let's say you have a terror bird that's an elder and it's extremely tall, and then you have a very shallow pond, and you try and you, you tell your bird to attack somebody, and they run into this very shallow water. Like, you can still see half of their body sticking out of it, pretty much. Now, the bird or whatever pet will probably not attack them. The range pets probably will still. Um, so they can still spew poison and stuff, but most of the time, though, um, you know, you're, the pet's going to be useless because it's not going to be able to chase somebody in super shallow water. Now, this is very infuriating because not only will it not chase them, but there's also a chance that the pet can get stuck in the water as well. So now you spend this time getting this pet to chase somebody to kill them that you know is extremely dangerous and that will still keep trying to kill you, but you, you just can't get to them with your pet. And you try and chase them, but they're now healing in the water, they're bandaging in the water, and they're gone from you. They cross the other side of the river, and now you got to go all the way around, or you got to find out some other route to try and get them. But at that time, it's sometimes better to just walk away, because you're just going to be wasting your time trying to chase them. Because who's to say your pet's not going to get stuck again? Uh, this happens even with turtles. I, I don't want to say water lizards, only water lizards melee, because water lizards can spew poison. But what I'm trying to say is, like, even the aquatic-based pets have a hard time uh even chasing people into water if at all sometimes they don't and this comes back again to like traveling with a group of friends now let's say you guys are traveling across heading north you know going across sausage lake a little short part of it you you're on your horse and then all of a sudden you notice that your terror bird won't follow you across the water now you could do one or two things you could open up a gm ticket and hope that the gm will teleport it to you while you're on the move um, sometimes they won't they'll say that you left your pet back there so now you got to go all the way back get your pet and then bring it um, or they just will take a while to get back to you or you just got to go back and uh, walk your pet all the way around and have your friends wait or your friends are just going to leave you and then you just have to try and catch up with them and have them stream their location on Discord and hope they don't get into a fight and get their asses kicked before you can even get there to help them out because I would say most of the time that is the thing that infuriates a lot of tamers and dominators it's not the fact their pet always just gets stuck that's huge but just the fact that it causes them to miss fights or for them to get screwed over uh, utilizing their pet due to its pathing and bugginess sometimes so that's one thing that can happen as well and the water does make things frustrating and now another thing is the housing so this is important as well so let's say that you are fighting a pet and you're like pets are op we'll just go to some water 
Let's go to a house. Yep, there you go. Pet GG it cannot follow you in the house. Sometimes it can't even really get close to the house at all due to an invisible wall. And guess what you could do in that house? You can log out in 10 seconds. You go get a coffee. You know, you could go get a snack, go get some water. You know, you're taking the chance. Sure, maybe the tamer or whoever you're fighting happens to own that house. Um, but most of the time, though, if you go in there, you freaking log out. <laughs> you go take a bathroom break or something, you know? The tamer can't do anything about that, you know? He'll maybe he'll try and chase you in there. But most of the time, I would say that tamers aren't melee based most of the time uh we're seeing a few more tamers that are trying out melee based uh same with domination but it's still very uncommon i would say so yeah you have the advantage of running into a house right now and stuff and we can't really do anything about that matter of fact sometimes if we do try and do something it just leads to you using a longbow or using your magic and killing our pet outside of the house or putting so much pressure on it that we have to run away from the house to try and find the spot just to heal up our pet and then we can't even get close to you now because you're in a house so that is one thing as well that's kind of really frustrating um another thing that i want to talk about as well is just of course you know getting the pets in the first place now sure you can buy steel like a steel sword like what 15 20 gold currently and uh i would say that's even kind of more on the high end depending on the town that you're at and then you buy your steel armor set but now if you want to buy like a terror bird like i set the prices of terror bird and fabernum and 100 gold i think is fair because first off you got to go all the way to the jungle to get them and then second off you got to make sure that you get out of the jungle without getting ganked and then bring them all the way up north hoping that you won't get ganked on any of those roads or sausage lake going by those guilds that live over there and stuff so you know it's like 100 gold for a terror bird and duly you might find it maybe for 60 to like 80 gold ish around there um higher up north i'd say it goes more besides mk mk they still might go around for the same price because there's a lot of tamers that don't mind going to the jungle and bringing them up but at the end of the day you still have to spend that time to get that pet to bring it up there to sell but then also now for you to buy these pets to use it's just extra money that you have to fork out to even try and use some of the best pets in the game now this is changing because you know pets are being treated more like expendable tools rather than just like a buddy buddy who i'm gonna name billy and billy's always gonna be with me no matter what you know it's like no billy's gonna be with you for like an hour bro <laughs> and then he's gonna get totally flopped and then you're gonna go tame a new pet and that's gonna be charlie and then charlie's gonna be your buddy for like an hour and then same thing you know um in most situations I would say it's more the mindset that people are starting to get into so you know you have to buy your pets and stuff and then on top of that you know stables and limited room uh to be a tamer dominator you know even ritualist it's uh, pretty important to consider the management profession tree so this is an extra 100 points towards a profession um just to make sure that you have an extra five slots in your stable now it doesn't sound like too big of a consequence at the moment but you know it's just an extra 100 points that you could use towards armor crafting or weapon crafting or fishing or something, you know, but now you're using it just so you can have more room to, uh, you know, store pets in your stables and stuff, which is cool. It's just another thing that we tamers have to go through. Um, also, that is feeding pets. So, yeah, I mean, it's cool to have like a Campadon or a Shore Prowler, but at the end of the day, you know, uh, the best pets in the game are the ones that eat meat. And if you don't use the ones that eat meat, then I feel sorry for you because you have to buy hella dial and stuff to use these pets. And they're kind of a pain in the ass sometimes. You know, like uh, I have a friend, you know, and if he's in here, Maui, what's up, man? Uh, I don't talk with him too much or anything, but he was just like, man, I wonder why nobody buys my Campadons in MK. By the way, he does sell pets in MK. So if you need a pet, hit up Maui. Um, you know, he's like, why does my elephants not sell an MK? And I think I told him one time, I'm like, dude, like, I don't want, I wouldn't pay for an elephant if it was like 60 gold, bro. Well, maybe I would just to relist it on the broker, but I wouldn't pay for it, you know, just because you got to feed that thing. That's the main consequence about it. At least with carnivore pets, you know, you freaking kill something and then you feed its corpse to your pet and it's happy. So yeah, feeding different types of pets is something too you want to keep an account for. And then, um... You know, on top of that as well, it's the zoology that's required because, like, let's say you do want to use a terror bird. Okay, that's 100 points. So now if you want to have your stables to carry five extra room, plus using a terror bird, that's an extra 200 points that you're basically using from your professions tree just so you can use, you know, a terror bird in battle and stuff like that. So um, to its maximum efficiency, you know, with pet points and things like that. So that's another reason, too, that you 
you know, have to, oh, another thing that you have to deal with and stuff. So, okay. And then in general, you know, it takes a lot of investment to get pets. Like in this video, like I said before, it's showing me what it takes to just go get a pet and bring it back from the jungle. And it takes a lot. And sometimes it's really challenging and sometimes it's not. But yeah, at the end of the day, you know, you have to put in all this time and hope that you're going to get a pet and be able to bring it back successfully. And um, I wouldn't recommend taming or domination to somebody who has like two to three hours um, a day to play this game. I mean, unless you're comfortable playing alone and unless, you know, you're just fine with dealing with these consequences and... You know, you still like the idea of just being a tamer and doing things, you know, solo and you don't worry about too much of slowing people down and stuff like that. So that's kind of how I would recommend, you know, pets to people and stuff right now that want to get into it. Um, now, when it comes to taming versus domination, would I recommend it? Uh, I would recommend, honestly, for now, taming. Uh, forget domination unless you're already into the magic tree. Because if you're like, you have your ecumenical level, let's say already at like 64, and you don't really ever sell pets for money or trade them to people, you know, and you only use pets for yourself, it might be worth it to get domination just so that way you have more options. You just would have to put in like an extra, like what, uh, 38 points or 34, 36 points or something into, uh, you know, your ecumenical and then boom, now instead of taming at 100, you have domination at 100, your ecumenical is 100, and then... It only costs you basically a total of 30 more points. You know, you got rid of taming. You don't have to worry about trading people pets or selling them on the broker and stuff. I would recommend it. But if you're a new player, I would definitely recommend taming because not only can you get into the business of selling horses, but you could also get into the business of selling terror birds, uh, selling uh, elephants, turtles, especially, you know, selling things like that. But with domination, you can also sell pets too. You just have to do it personally. Which is a very risky business, but if you get a low level domination pet, you can abandon it and then have a dominator dominate it and then they'll pay you for the transaction pretty much. So, when it comes to other things with pets as well and stuff, um, we, deal with, we deal with a lot, but the main thing also is just knowing the future. And I think that, you know, pets, can they be OP? Yes. In general though, I would say no, they're not. There's a lot more that goes behind the scenes with them. And uh, in the future, though, however, this may change, and it does worry me slightly, um, just because right now we are getting ranged pets in the game. And let me tell you, these ranged pets are kind of strong. However, at the end of the day, you know, even though I have a water lizard that can hit somebody through like t for like 25 damage with a ranged poison bolt through steel armor um, at max level, this pet still has like 286 health, <laughs> and it has no armor. So it's basically just a sitting, slow, flesh target that you can just chomp up pretty much if you get access to it so there's always a cost you know for for these things too um some pets are stronger than others but then they typically do have their weaknesses though in the future we will get beast mastery and pet armor and possibly even a way to fast travel with our pets meaning that if this changes in the future this is when i would recommend taming a domination more than anything i would recommend taming a domination maybe even ritualism if you got access to a mode where you go into it and then your pet is all of a sudden as fast as your horse so now you don't need to worry about your pet getting stuck way back there or anything your turtle that's all of a sudden super slow is now matching the speed of your horse and when it gets into a fight then it slows down but until then it's very fast i like this because it'll be very convenient it'll allow casual players to play with taming and domination a lot more but i don't like it because it takes away a bit from the immersiveness of the game because it's just kind of goofy imagining a turtle running as fast as a horse you know what i'm saying or a campadon <laughs> moving as fast as the horse it's just kind of kind of weird you know but i get it it's for convenience quality of life type of thing so um if that did happen then cool and uh on top of that though we have pet armor and beast mastery i would also recommend probably beast mastery to people when they come back sure it's not out in the game yet but from what it sounds like is that it will definitely be a uh, reward slash punishment type of system for tamers so if you cast this ability successfully on your target then your pet will do a special move and if you fail then your pet might freeze in place for a couple seconds and be unresponsive so that's my summary of idea of how the system i believe has been told so far and how it's going to be and each pet will have unique abilities which will allow you to have a lot of fun testing out different pets seeing their special abilities and finding a build that meets 
your pet's build because you could have a, a, a special build just to run with a pet depending on what their ability is you don't know what it'll be so that's exciting and then also with pet armor um i think this is great however i would want there to be a consequence um for you know like for instance let's put let's say you put steel armor on a terror bird okay cool the terror bird is now like very resistant to pierce damage but maybe it should be resistant to pierce damage just on its torso um rather than covering its entire body you know and even if it did cover its torso and maybe its body, well, let's say that it would reduce its speed or reduce its damage done um, by this much percent or something. I just, I, I think there'll be a consequence for it, and I think there should be. Because at the moment, if you do have armor on a horse, it slows it down. And I'm assuming once you put armor on the pets, it'll have some kind of similarity to that, um, which I think is good and healthy. Because we um, don't want to make pets users to op and stuff like that so this will be my last takeaway point so currently with the game and stuff uh i have 1600 hours as a tamer slash dominator and i think it's uh i think it's fun it's a good game but i'm reaching a time in my life where i'm just very busy irl i don't have as much time to stream or to play the game as i'd like to and i'm noticing it's a little harder to just tame and even to level up pets and stuff like that so in a sense like i said before i wouldn't recommend this game if you don't have a lot of time to really or sorry i wouldn't recommend taming a domination if you don't have a lot of time to play it and even if you do still i wouldn't necessarily recommend it either just because it can take away a lot of your fun gameplay by just preparing for it if that makes sense at least with like melee you know an archery you can still put up a good fight and have some fun with a cheap set of gear and stuff like that but getting a pet sometimes like i said you travel all the way out here and it doesn't even exist because it's not even out here right now or something you know and um with in in the future with the state of the game i really hope that they that pets never become the meta i never want like ritualism you know domination or even like taming to be the meta unless there's a good reason for it like in the future they talk about domination you'll be able to dominate a troll now trolls are hella strong they're mini bosses pretty much um they give everybody a hard run for their money they can be zerg down though it's just so much more difficult and i just hope that eventually when we are able to control trolls or even like bosses like the clothos queen or the niter queen um or some type of a uh, megalith type of creature that it'll be still possible to defeat it but it'll have a very hefty price tag in order to maintain it because if pets ever become like the main of this game like the beta then that'll kind of suck um, just because the footies are what keep this game alive the footies and the archers and if uh, taming just becomes too op then it'll really frustrate a lot of them and it'll kind of just be unfortunate to watch them quit the game slowly and stuff you know because at the end of the day i think taming should definitely be balanced but at the same time i think it's a due diligence of a foot fighter to learn how to fight these beasts um especially if they give them frequent problems and stuff rather than just complaining about them uh, another thing though that is also on my radar is magic now this will be the last thing that i cover but with magic i want to be cautious with that as well because at the moment it is very 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 strong especially if mounted majory as well as partnered with taming it is very strong um, however it does still have its weaknesses and it still can be countered especially with multiple people maybe two or three but at the moment though if we continue to continue releasing things that are based around magic and making magic so op then this game will turn into like a pokemon game with magic pretty much you know we'll have you know really strong magic abilities that can go right through a foot fighter's armor and kill them and then we even if it doesn't the pet is already attacking them and stuff and i'm just like we really got to show some love to our foot fighters with whatever um features come up next i hope it's crossbows i hope it's different types of bows i hope it's maybe different types of arrows i hope it's different types of uh, melee weapons like fist weapons special abilities you know uh different things that allow them to basically still be strong and put up a good fight and deal with the fact that some magic users just need to thunder lash somebody like four times and they're dead and they can easily do that because they travel around with two people and they can target things really easily and stuff i mean sure it rewards good players with aim but at the end of the day you know it's just i kind of feel for the footies when they spend all this time still <laughs> you know not as much well maybe equally as much and look or two like 
the gold amount as much still getting stuff ready and then they just get killed you know so i don't know it's a balance it's a mix between we all have our moments of glory and our moments of uh, failure so that's just my perspective that's my opinion so anyways if you stuck through this video thanks for sticking through a 40 minute video here i uh, tried keeping it shorter than my last video which i epically failed at but all in all hope you enjoyed the content it's pretty pretty funny day just trying to tame uh <laughs> terror birds today uh it's definitely why i've earned my name ken's trash because even after 15 1600 hours i still uh sometimes have trouble taming terror birds and this and that so uh i hope you have a good one and uh i'll talk to you later